Hey, welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're a couple in love that loves reviewing movies, especially uh, nerd movies like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the DC Extended Universe. Uh, and so that's what we're doing today. We are reviewing uh, the DCEU. We're going ahead and ranking them, we're reviewing them, and that's what this video is about. And today we get to rank what is my favorite of the DCEU so far, which is Wonder Woman. Okay, so let's dive into our lead characters, which are Steve Trevor and, of course, Wonder Woman. Diana Prince. Yes. Uh, love it or leave it? I love it. Uh, I love both these characters. I think for both of them, um, they have a type of people that I would love to have in my inner circle of friends. They have integrity, honesty, and inherent nobility of character. Um, mm -hmm. Not to mention the fact that they're both, like, insanely attractive, which obviously doesn't hurt. Yeah. Um, but I think they just have all of the great qualities in terms of personality and badassness that just make them people you want to be around. Oh, definitely. I mean, you want them in your group of friends. They're both extremely likable. Wonder Woman's pretty much just perfect all around. I mean, you know, she's super noble. She's brave. She's got a sense of humor even. Um, you know, she's she's honest. She's fierce. And uh, she's incredibly sexy. And I, I can actually relate to uh, Steve in this by, you know, being in love with a woman that's completely out of your league. I thought you were going to say that you could relate to Wonder Woman. I was waiting after after that build-up. I was like, oh, really? He said, no, no, no. I, you know. <laughs> At first I thought you were all blushing and everything like that. I was like, oh, he's going to talk about me again. No, right. Yeah. See, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I did. Exactly. See, you know. I zigged when you thought I was going to zag. That brings us then, uh, now that we know that we love our leads, how do we feel about our villain? So our villain in this is Ares. He is the god of war, or as he likes to call himself, the god of truth. So I think that's highly Whatever. debatable. Whatever, yeah. Um, so what is Ares' end goal? He basically wants to show that that, that mankind, well, they, they, Zeus shouldn't put faith in mankind, and that they, they are just inherently evil. This is a leap for me. We get another powerful villain. A, a lot is at stake, you know, the world's at stake again. But I wasn't invested in, in, in the storyline at all, and, um, and like, not in the storyline, but in the villain's story. It wasn't a relatable villain, um, and I think that's where it's it's not getting me so far in the DCEU. All these villains are just these big, bad monsters um, set to destroy the world, and that's all they are. As you may have gathered from my facial expressions during that, I had a difference of opinion. Um... <laughs> What do you mean the first time? <laughs> I love the history that they build in with Ares right from the get-go. She's um, a history nerd. That's why she loves history. I am a history nerd. I'm also a mythology nerd. So it's if it wasn't, if it, yeah, if it wasn't Ares, if it was just, you know, uh, called um, darkness or something like that, or war, and it wasn't all the mythology about Ares and the gods, I don't think you'd like them as much. I think I would. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, I, what I loved is you, you go through the, probably about three quarters of the film, thinking that Ares has embodied one guy only to find out the reveal at the end of the movie that he's actually embodied someone who we thought was on our side. And he hasn't been out there waging war on the front lines, but he's been rather just doing deceitful things behind the scenes. To me, that's more delicious. I felt the betrayal, I was angry at the betrayal, and especially since Wonder Woman kills the general too easily, it wasn't satisfying to me when he died. So we needed that bigger, more manipulative mastermind. So. I, I did like the villain. Up next are side characters. Side characters. I'm sorry. This again? <laughs> this again? Really? Really? <laughs> Moving on to side, side characters. characters. Oh, yeah. You did it that we time. We did it That's that time. <laughs> <laughs> For me, this was a love it. I really liked Antiope and Queen Hippolyta. Um, I just really liked their characters and their dynamic and that whole, um, you know, one's trying to protect her, the other one's trying to train her up. And also to protect her. Yeah, also to, also to protect her and protect the world, you know. I also uh, had it as a love it. Um, for me, one character that really stuck out in, in a fantastic way was Etta. She does so much to boost the lightheartedness in this film, to set up comic jokes, to deliver jokes, um, as well as to make us like our leads even more. So she really serves a huge purpose to this film, and I think the actress just yeah. kicked it out of the park. I mean, she was she great. great. Kicked it out of the park. Hit it out of the park. You know what? He's just picking on me today. <laughs> So next up, we're going to talk about script and do we love it or leave it. For me, this was a love it. DC, I think, has has strived in a lot of their movies to have very poignant and um, important life lessons sprinkled throughout the dialogue. A couple of the quotes that I jotted down because they really stuck out to me was, 
Wonder Woman says, I will fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. And in a nutshell, that's what Wonder Woman is entirely. Um, mm -hmm. She saves an entire village in France because she decides to run over no man's land. Don't tell her what she can't do, for the love of God, because this woman will do it. See why she reminds me of her? <laughs> Another one is, it's not about deserve, it's about what you believe, and I believe in love. Um, that was such a turning point in the movie. It happens at the climax of the film. It's in the middle of a big battle. It's not about this person should get what they deserve in the end. It's about what do I stand for? What do I believe in? And how are my actions going to define me versus what I think someone else should get in the end? It's really tough to do a love story for an origin film. Because you got to focus on your lead a lot. You know, you got to bring in, uh, us into this world and this character and everything like that. So it's kind of tough to focus on... Uh, you know, their love interests, make their love interests interesting. But I think they did a really good job with that one. And I think that, you know, we are we are really invested in Steve's journey just as much uh, as Wonder Woman's journey, you know, and like they're on the same path together and we really, really rooting for them to get together. Obviously, Wonder Woman is an incredibly female empowering movie. I mean, she is our hero. She does what men are oftentimes too afraid to do, like running over no man's land. Mm -hmm. And in fairness to the men, they'd be killed. So there's yeah. good reason to be afraid. But the point is, her courage, her integrity, her character, she is so good at heart and she's got the strength to back that up. One thing I'm going to kind of go off on a tangent here is I saw a lot of people on social media saying that Wonder Woman wasn't feminist enough because Wonder Woman was so sexy. A lot of this came after Captain Marvel came out. I'm not going to lie. I love the fact that Captain Marvel was a superhero who was not in stilettos and a low cut top. I applaud that. All that being said, some women like to feel sexy. They feel good when they feel sexy. So Wonder Woman being sexy does not make her less feminist. Um, I think there's something going on in the world where we really enjoy tearing each other down. And I gotta say, like, woman to all the women out there, be the woman that fixes the other woman's crown, not that rips it off her head. We gotta be on each other's side and have each other's back. So both Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel can be feminist and female empowering, even if one is in jeans and an old t-shirt and the other one is in lingerie. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We can all agree that these women are badasses. And I think as an audience member, they both inspired me and there's nothing wrong with that. Moving on to film impact. What kind of impact did this film leave with us? You know, how did it make you feel? The heart, the humor. Did you laugh? Did you cry? Like, what was your movie going experience. Because. Exactly. And for me, the film impact, I love it. Uh, it was it was a funny movie. I really enjoyed that. But you know what? It hit the right amount of humor in it for this for this film. You know, it, it didn't go too overboard with all these different corny jokes and everything. It just did its fish out of water little bits or whatever. And then we got into the action and then it, and, you know, it started to get more serious. And then like they kind of dropped the jokes after that. They didn't take themselves too seriously, but they also didn't dismiss some of the horror that is war when, yeah. when they are all in that village and the snow starts falling and they're dancing because they saved the village and then the next day the village gets gassed. It definitely had impact I think because they gave us such likable leads and because those leads had both humor and heart throughout the entire film with their courage, with their jokes, with their fish out of water, with their sense of right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Of course at the end when when one of them is dying and the other one misses the chance to say goodbye, it's of course impactful. I definitely was crying. I'm always crying. <laughs> For me, it resonated because growing up, we were so conditioned to seeing women as the damsels. Wonder Woman breaks that mold and then some because mm. all the guys are putting their faith in her and she is so deserving of it and then some. Yeah. Um, I think just as a female audience member, it was so inspiring and wonderful to see that because now you can hold yourself up to that standard and be like, yes, a woman, when she wants something done, can go out and do it herself. You don't need someone else's permission or approval or a guy. You can go out and be your own hero. And I think that was really important. And, you know, for me, it was <laughs> seeing Steve and being able to recognize that, you know, you might think you're above average, but when you meet this uh, gorgeous, um, strong, confident woman, she thinks that you're average. <laughs> and shift your confidence. But you gotta be strong. You gotta stay true to yourself. If you stay true to yourself and you prove yourself, then, you know, you can find love right before you die. I think that's a great message. Kind of laced with something depressing. And you are anything 
but average. Okay, let's move on to our final scores. So for me, Wonder Woman got a score of 89. And for me, it was a score of 101, but she also got a fist bump. Ooh, so that makes it 102. It does. Which makes our total score a 95 for Wonder Woman, which right now puts it in the lead for our DCEU rankings. Yeah. Uh, next up will be Birds of Prey. It'll be our first in theaters review. We're very excited about that. We hope you'll check it out with us and uh, you know see our reaction. We really love it. Leave it, and uh, if you should run to it, and yeah, I'm, not, I'm looking forward to that. Me too. It's our date night. It is our date night. Yeah, <laughs> can't wait for that. So that makes our total score for Wonder Woman a 95. But that is definitely not definitive. 